The Breaker New Waves, Chapter 197. This is going to be a quick review because I already recorded this and accidentally deleted it. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to do it again. So, the biggest thing with this chapter, Nine Arts remembers Shio. It seems as though all have, of his memories have finally fallen into place. You see, you know, Julia and his other, his other assistant being like, Yo, do you need the drugs? Like, you good? Like, and he's like, no, I can't run away from these memories anymore. And it's interesting to see his resolve and what he says, you know, about Shiyun and about Shio in terms of even though this has all come back to him and he remembers his time with them and, and everything like that, and how he raised Shiyun as his student, how he fell in love with Shio. He's gone down this path, and he recognizes the wrongs that he's committed. He realizes that he cannot stop treading this path. It's almost a path of no redemption. If he does get redeemed at some point, it's not going to be until deep into into part three, okay? And he's not. He he's just he's resolved himself to go down this dark path. He doesn't give a fuck for whatever ends he has, because he you see him point out that he knows that Kaiser was willing to dispose of him once he's run his course, and that's not going to change. That's not going to change. The fact that you know Kaiser sees him solely as a toy in his pocket. He has so sweet another one of his toys. He doesn't give a fuck. Him and his organization at the end of the day are ruthless and crazy. Okay. Nine Arts is still going to abide by them because whatever his end game may be at this point, which he, I feel as though he'll be starting to formulate, because up until this he's been a drugged zombie, you know, slave of Kaiser and at the SUC. That's what he's been. Now that he finally remembers and has been awoken by his confrontation with Shiyun, I feel as though he's going to start going down a path that is completely, you know, divergent from Kaiser, but also not aligned with the world of Murum or with Shiyun. So it's going to be really interesting to see how, you know, things develop, how the relationship with Kaiser and Nine Arts is going forward. I think that's one of the main things they're going to try and give us a quick peek into before the end of part of part two of, of New Ways. Because I think this is coming to an end now. With the events of this chapter, you know, I'm pretty sure, like I've been saying the last couple of reviews, they're trying to end this cleanly on chapter 200 and move us into part three. So here's some of the things I'm expecting by the end of this, because you see us leading towards a conclusion. I think we'll get a little bit of showcasing into how Kaiser is going to be operating going forward, how Nine Arts will relate to that, and how him and his organization will be moving. Just a quick glimpse into it. Now that Elder Quan has, has, you know, been killed, rest in peace, rest in peace. Like I said when he first died, a ripple effect into the world of Morum is going to occur, and it's going to heavily change, you know, and influence the events of the series going forward. It's already changed and altered Shion's perception entirely. So we're going to see some of that. We're going to see the effects on the Sun Wu clan. We'll probably, you know, I'm hoping that we get glimpses into parts of the depths of Morm that we haven't seen, like potentially, you know, the first Grand Master above Quan and seeing his reaction to the news of Quan's death, things like that, just deepening and expanding the world, you know, what will become of the SUC, you know, if Ryuji will be a part of it in any sense, you know, what's, you know, once we see, you know, a thousand faces go back with Kaiser as well, how, you know, who is the general force if she was being used by him in a deeper kind of insurgent level this whole time, who is the, you know, general force that Kaiser has under his whim aside from his toys of nine arts and so sweet. Things like that we might get a brief glimpse into before we move on. Now, next couple things we get in this chapter, Chan is dead. Chan dies in Chun Hyuk's arms in this chapter. And I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I really don't. Everybody knows that I've always hated Chan. He's a rap bastard. And I'm just like, like honestly, with this chapter, it still didn't make me feel anything. I'm like, seriously, bro? bro? Like, that? that's it? Are you serious? You did all of that. You because you wanted your kohai to to recognize you recognize me kohai it's not even recognize me senpai it's recognize me kohai like i want him to look up to me and respect me and he did chan hyuk respected chan this whole time you could tell by the way they interacted with each other you can tell by as he has him in his arms now and chan's just realizing it as he cries out as the man dies in his arms that he's always respected him what because he was a prodigy and he's long since surpassed you you thought he didn't respect you and so you did all this you you demeaned him and your relationship with him you manipulated the world of Murum. you harmed so many people you're fucking ruthless and vicious acting like you had some sort of other end game and you're trying to establish not as a god when really you're just being manipulated by the whole time, all because you wanted Chun Hyuk to recognize you? Chan, man, it's so sad. 
and it's not even sad like in a way that I feel bad. I, don't, I, I mean, I'm sorry if I'm stepping on some toes and some people really like Chan's character. I don't know who that is. I'm just like, yo, this is pathetic. It really is. I'm sorry. Like, I don't feel bad for him. I really don't. I, my biggest thing, I, I, there may be a tinge of sadness, just a tinge, because, you know, man's going out. Like, I'm going to pay my respects like he's dying anyway. But I'm more interested to see how Chun Hyuk, re, you know, responds to this, because he doesn't know that he was, you know, acting as the leader of the SUC. I don't think anybody, at the, you know, the top, you know, members of Murum noticed Chan there, or seemingly didn't, you know, Kang Sung never confronted him, nobody said shit to him, he just slithered off into the distance, S only, only she knows, really, o she is the only one that really knows, and she is not a snitch, she's not gonna say shit, I think she resolve is gonna be insane going forward right now, and see, and that's what I'm really interested in, is seeing the dynamic of the Sun Wu clan and the rest of Murum's reaction right now, but I think this is gonna heavily change Chan Hyuk, whether he finds out about his, Chan's involvement in it or not, it's going to shape his outlook for part three and how he goes in. So I'm really interested in to see, you know, interested to see how he responds to that, how he, you know, what the news of Jagal and everything like that. And the last thing we get this chapter is Megan, Megan son, you know, gla glasses, government senpai, he's he's up in there, he wakes up from being knocked out and everything, you get a little bit of comedy between him and his assistant, which is cool, I honestly forgot about the dude, he's dope, he's dope, don't get me wrong, he's a little, he's a little slimy here and there, but he is, is he's an alright character by me, and I forgot about him, you see him surveying the damage, you know, and he can, he can tell, he's like, where's Nine Arts, what is this? Looking at the damage from a colossal bout between Nine Arts and Quan, and then Shiyun Black, Origin Threshold and Niners. She's crazy. She was crazy. And last thing that I really like the artwork this chapter. Honestly, like the breaker artwork is, has been superb for a long time. But that color page, that Niners color page was beast. You know, just him reminiscing about his fight with Shun and seeing all the different, you know, crazed faces of Shun during Black Origin Threshold was insane. And plus that last page showcasing, you know, him, Shiho, and Shun back in the day, a little flashback sequence. And you can really see physically how both Nine Arts and, you know, she wouldn't have changed. So it's really interesting to see that. And the last thing that I want to mention in this review is that I think that by the end of New Ways, you know, we're going to get a glimpse of Shio Awakening. Because, you know, she's been up in this rejuvenation tank for the whole time. And with Nara starting to remember her, you know, he doesn't know that she's still alive. Most people don't know that she's still alive. So I think she's going to awaken. And when she does awaken, it's going to be interesting to see, you know, going forward into part three, how she affects everything, how she affects Shiyun, how she affects, you know, Nine Arts going down the line, and how she reintegrates into this world. So I'm hyped for that. I'm hyped, and I think we'll see that by the end of New Waves. So that's pretty much it. We're heading towards the conclusion of New Waves. Let me know your thoughts, and I'm out. Peace.